Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part three of the Great Deception. Today's focus is going to be on, well, we're going to do Deuteronomy chapter 11. We're going to finish that up. We started it last time, but I got off the rabbit trail doing fire. And then we're going to take a look at hypocrites and hypocrisy. Boy, uh, Bible has a, quite a bit to say about that. So let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 11. And in part two, we got to, let's see, we got to, oh, we got to verse 17. So I guess we're going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 18. Well, let's do 16. Deuteronomy 11, verse 16. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods, and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land, which the Lord giveth you. Now, quite frankly, I believe the United States was given to Israel by the Lord himself. And that's my opinion. You know, they came here, they found the Native American Indians. Uh, it's not politically correct, but there were a bunch of cannibals, a lot of them. Maybe not all the tribes, but a lot of the tribes were. Even Thomas Jefferson, a deist, not a Christian, but he had respect for the Bible, in the, um, I think it was in the Declaration of Independence, he called them savages. Yeah. And I, I tell you what, if you're a man, and you've got a family, and you're living next door to a bunch of cannibals, I would hope that you would know what to do. I would. Verse 18. Now, that's my opinion. I think, I think this is the New Testament promised land, or was. But now we're getting into the problems, because we've fallen away, we've been deceived. Now we're in the curse phase. We were in the blessing phase, now we're in the curse phase. Verse 18, Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart, and in your soul, and bind them for a sign upon your hand, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Do you know that until 1963 and 1964, from when this country was first founded, you know, 1700s, we had Bible reading and prayer in Jesus' name in the public schools. I actually remember this. I was in first, possibly second or third grade when they took it out. I don't remember exactly what year, but they did. And if you take a look since 1964, that's when the country started going down the toilet. I mean, I got in a discussion, I should say, not an argument, one of the guys at work, and um, he looked it up. In 1960 or so, there was less than a thousand murderers in the entire United States. Well, last year, in Chicago alone, just Chicago, the third largest city in the United States, there were 762 murders in that one city alone. 
Not L.A., not New York, not Atlanta, not Detroit, not Miami, just Chicago. There's been quite a bit of difference. So, and thou shalt write them. Write them what? God's, God's words, his laws. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thine gates. That your days may be multiplied in the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. And, I'm sorry, for if ye shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from from before you, and ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Isn't that what happened in America? We drove out all the nations. We we drove out the uh, all the. Well, we we drove them out. I mean, let's face it. Modern day Mexico. That was the uh, Aztec Empire. They were doing human sacrifices and cannibalism. At least they had a civilization. The Indians, the American Indians, for the most part, what, what kind of civilization did they have? They built teepees. I mean, they didn't have any castles or anything. Verse 24, Every place there, there whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours. From the wilderness of Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon, as he hath said unto you. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. Yeah, when we honored Jesus Christ, we were blessed as a people. Think about it. In 1611, when, when the King James Bible came out, England basically ruled the waves. I mean, the English Navy was all over the world. England had probably was in control of one quarter of all the real estate of the world. Were they perfect? Absolutely not. But I had a, uh, I worked in a hotel that was owned by a bunch of Hindu Indians from India. And one of the guys told me his grandfather had lived in India when the British were in charge. And then the uh, they got their so-called independence. And his grandfather had told him that uh, the American, I'm, I'm sorry, that the British ruled India was much, much nicer for the lower class people than it is when the the uh, in Hindu Indians ran the, the show. He says, because at least the British made sure that everybody got fed. Now in India, you have 3,000, on average of 3,000 people every single day that die of starvation. And yet India exports rice hundreds of thousands and thousands of tons of rice. And uh, if you don't believe me, go to the store and buy basmati rice from India. You see, the rich would rather export the rice and let their own people starve. They don't care. Of course, India is the land of uh, hundreds of thousands of heathen, false, satanic gods. So, you know, when you pray to Shiva or Vishnu or Brahma or Hare Krishna for food, which is a devil, don't be surprised when your prayers are not answered. Jesus told his people, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. You know, God the Father should uh, do it. I'm paraphrasing. You know, I mean, God promised he would feed us and clothe us. That's the only two promises of the Bible for God's people. Food and clothing. 
not a place to live, not color TV, not cable, not a brand new car, not a Learjet for the Creflo send me many a dollar. Um, now what can I tell you? Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse. Now, this is America and Europe today. America and Europe are cursed because we allowed the Antichrist to dishonor God the Father and His Son, only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. We took prayer out of the public schools in Jesus' name in the Bible because we wouldn't want to offend the poor Jews. That's the real reason. They say that we're atheists, but, you know, if somebody was truly an atheist and didn't believe in God, they could snicker when you did prayers, you know, in Jesus' name. But no, it's, it's not an atheist. It's because it was offensive to the Antichrist. And a curse, if you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known, the gods of Kabbalah. And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee in unto the land, whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gizrim and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Are they not on the other side? Jordan, by the way, where the sun goeth down in the land of the Canaanites. Do you know that the, uh, the word cannibal even comes from the word Canaan, as in Canaanites, and Baal, which uh, was a heathen, satanic, false god, B-A-A-L, Canaan, Baal, Canaan, cannibal. It was a kind of a contraction. They shortened it up. But they did. They did human sacrifices on an altar to Satan. And then they, they ate the people. They cooked them and ate them. And let me tell you what. Uh, they did this in New Guinea. The Australian Aborigines, they do it in Africa. They did it in South America. And the American Indians did this practice. And yet it's the white Christians that are in the news media that are how horrible people they are. In the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the Champagne, over against Gilgal, against the plains of Mora. For ye shall pass over Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it and dwell therein. And ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day. You know, people, when you dishonor Christ, a country, he turns his back on you. America and Europe were blessed beyond measure. Well, those days are over, people. Over. All right, according to the King James Bible online, the word hypocrite, hypocrites, appears 20 times. First time it appears, I believe, the book of Job, chapter 15, verse 32 to 35. It shall be accomplished before his, his time, and his branch shall not be green. Do you know that... Uh, Christ is referred to as the branch. Didn't he say that, um, oh, let's take a look. We will. We'll take a look. In John chapter 15 and verse 5, Jesus said, I am the vine. 
ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. And that's the truth. You, without Christ, we can do nothing. All right, back to Job chapter 15, verse 32. It shall be accomplished before his time, and his branch shall not be green. He shall shake off his unripe grape as the vine, and shall cast off his flower as the olive. For the congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate, and fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. They conceive mischief and bring forth vanity, and their belly prepareth deceit. So let's break this down just real quick. Congregation of hypocrites shall be desolate. That means empty, right? And fire shall consume the tabernacles of bribery. Isn't that what happens um, to our political leaders? They call it campaign contributions. These big, evil, wicked companies and people um, bribe our political leaders. Of course, you know, campaign contributions. It's not bribery, right? But uh, fire shall consume the tabernacles of these people. It says they conceive mischief and bring forth vanity. Vanity means worthless. And their belly prepareth deceit. So, sounds like, uh, sounds like they're going to be in trouble come Judgment Day, right? All right. All right, let's take a look at Isaiah, chapter 33, starting in verse 12. Isaiah is... Uh, Probably the most quoted book in the Bible in the New Testament. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime. As thorns cut up shall they be burned in the fire. Thorns. Hear ye that are far off. What have I done? And ye that are near, acknowledge my might. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? See, in my last study I showed there's good fire and there's bad fire. The righteous are going to have their bad works burned up, but their good works will remain. But the evil, they're in trouble. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly, he that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hand from holding of bribes, that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood, and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil. So the righteous, they're going to be, they're going to be okay. But our righteousness only, only comes in Christ. Just remember that. In 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1, we read, My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Now, an advocate is modern day usage. We would call that a defense attorney because they plead your case before the judge. And, of course, God the Father is going to be the judge, and Jesus Christ is going to be our advocate or defense attorney. 
I don't know about you, but I, I kind of like the idea of having uh, the judge's son as my defense attorney and not the prosecutor, which is going to be Satan, right? So there's a lot of people preach sermons on that very thing. So, all right, let's take a look. All right, let's turn to Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 1. Take heed that ye do not your alms before men. What's an alms? It's basically charity, you know. You see somebody that's down and out and, you know, super thin, and they have, it looks like they haven't eaten for a week, you know, and, and if you gave them a coupon or something for a free meal that would be alms you know or giving them some money or whatever and sadly a lot of the people do that nowadays they they don't want food they want to buy drugs but you know what can I tell you or if you see somebody that's disabled so take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them <clears throat> in other words, don't be like the rich people that have TV shows where they raise money for, uh, you know, like, remember, uh, what was it, Jerry Lewis, when he did, used to do the muscular dystrophy? Of course, he used to get paid, I understand he got paid a million dollars a show back in, whatever, the 70s or 80s or whatever. I mean, I don't know. Take heed that you do not do, that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee. You know, you don't blow a trumpet and everybody's looking your way and then you hand the poor person something, a gift, right? So everybody looks and says, oh, look, he gave that poor person something. Nope. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. What? As the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. When thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, so where are these hypocrites? For they love to pray standing in the synagogues. That's twice Jesus has mentioned synagogues and, and hypocrites, huh? For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. You know, every time I read this, I think of the, uh, the rosary. They say the same thing over and over. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail, Hail, Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. And the, the priest will tell you to say it 30 times or 20 times or 15 times or I don't know. Be not ye therefore like unto them. Don't be like them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. 
After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Hmm. Is he talking about something made out of wheat or rye, or is he talking something a little bit more spiritual? And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. You know, gee, I did an entire study on forgiveness. You know, there's going to be people going to hell because they won't forgive. People that believe in Christ that won't forgive others for their things, you know, their things that other people have done to them. They're going to go to hell because Jesus said, if, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Forgiveness is a very important thing. Now, I'm talking about somebody that uh, um, does something to you personally. You have absolutely no authority to forgive somebody that offends the Lord, like a Satanist. You know, if somebody steals $20 from you, yeah, you should forgive them. Somebody wants to sacrifice a child on an altar to Satan, that's not your place to forgive. So keep that in mind. We're supposed to forgive those that offend us personally. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Ah, here we go. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. I mean, think about it. You know, if, if you can't forgive some, you know, um, your spouse for saying, oh, you, you know, you're starting to get fat. I mean, you know, is, is God going to forgive you for far worse things that you did unto him? For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your fa heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. You know, Jesus said, if you show mercy, you'll be shown mercy. And if you forgive, you'll be forgiven. Verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Isn't that interesting? Fasting. Fasting has not only a health benefit, but evidently it has some sort of a spiritual benefit, according to Christ here. And all these are Christ's words, not mine. Verse 19, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, Thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? You ever looked in somebody's eyes and you see just dark, soulless nothing? Evil people. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon's basically riches and money. 
So what do you want to do? Serve God or you want to serve money? Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? That's clothing, by the way. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Wherefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth what ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not our righteousness, not by keeping the law. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for, for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 15. You know, those of you that uh, listen to me on a regular basis, yeah, I, you know, you've, you've heard these things a couple, few times, I'm sure, but, you know, not everybody. I get new subscribers, and, you know, there's sometimes it's good to hear the same thing over a couple times so it sinks in. One thing I always learned when I was going to school, especially college, if the teacher or professor said something two or three times, it was important. I'd write it down, mark it in a book, because it would be on the test. And it served me well. Matthew chapter 15, verse 1. Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees. Pharisees are a denomination of the Jews. All Pharisees are Jews. Not all Jews are Pharisees, but all Pharisees are Jews. So, just think of it. You know, you got Baptists, you got Methodists, Lutherans. Uh, you know, they, there's different denominations of Christians. You know, all true born-again Baptists are Christians, but not all born-again Christians are Baptists. So... Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem. So that should give you a hint right there what Pharisees are. They're from Jerusalem. What's in Jerusalem? Jews, right? Saying, so then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, so here it is, the Pharisees, the Jews are talking to Jesus. Verse 2, why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Tradition. For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, obviously, you know, if you're a mother, you know, is it a bad thing to wash your hands before you eat? Absolutely not. But they made a tradition out of it, a ritual. Verse 3, But he, Jesus, but he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. You ever heard of the Mendez brothers? Their family, their mother and father were rich, and they didn't want to wait for their inheritance, so they kind of hurried things along. They killed their parents so that they could live the good life, supposedly. Well, the police figured it out, and you know they went to prison. Allegedly, I, you know, I guess we won't know till Judgment Day if they really did kill their parents, but the, the court said they did. So, he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, 
Now this comes right out of the Babylonian Talmud. Uh, Talmud means learning. So it's learning from Babylon or Babylonian learning. It's their Jews' commentary on what the scriptures really mean because that's what their tradition of the elders is. You know, the elders were the rabbis. You see, what the Bible says and what the rabbi says, the rabbi says is more important because he's going to explain to you what the, what the Bible really means. For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. So in other words, if you curse your parents, you put a satanic curse on them or whatever, or you, you, know, you, you want to kill them, well, pff, hey, if you stick a knife in your father's back, it's a gift. I gave you a gift. I stuck a knife in your back. Isn't that a wonderful gift? That's basically what this is saying. But ye say, whatsoever ye shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. Hey, I put poison in your drink and killed you. I gave you a gift, the poison. It's a gift. That's the wisdom of the rabbis from the Talmud. But ye say, whosoever shall say of his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. In other words, God said to put him to death, but ye say, no, they get to walk away scot-free. Thus, ha thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites! Well did Isaiah prophesy of you, that's the Greek rendering of Isaiah, well did Isaiah Isaiah's prophesy of you, saying, The people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. For in vain... They do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Not the commandments of God. The Jews teach the commandments, the doctrines of men. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. You know, you don't wash your hands before you eat. Yeah, you might get sick because you got dirty hands, but that doesn't defile you, okay? You eat a piece of pork, does that defile you? No. But out of your heart comes murders and, you know, blasphemies. Verse 12. Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended? Jesus, don't you know that you offended those Jews? Ah, didn't you? Don't you know that? Then came his disciples and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard the saying? But he, Jesus, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. And if you want to know more about this, I got a thing on the parable of the wheat and the tares, tares or weeds. Verse 14, let them alone, they be blind leaders of the blind. Who's he talking about here? The Pharisees. They be blind leaders of the blind, and if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, What, are you a blind also, you idiot? You don't understand what, I, what I'm talking about here? Oh, wait, no, that's the Bob translation. Never mind. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught? The draught is basically the toilet. You know, but those things which proceed out of the mouth 
come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. And you know what kills me is there are supposedly Christian churches that are inviting unbelieving rabbis. Basically, they're antichrists because they deny that Jesus is the Christ to teach this their congregation what the Bible really means. And Jesus blasted these people over and over and over. Well, let's take a look at another thing. Matthew chapter 23. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do. In other words, when they tell you to do something, you do it. But do not ye after their works, for they say, and do not. In other words, they, you know, they, they talk the talk, but they won't walk the walk. You know, they'll tell you the right thing, but, you know, have you do it, but they won't do it. Verse 4. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves would not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men, they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments, and love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. And they will lie to you and tell you that rabbi means teacher. Wrong. Verse 8 tells you what rabbi means. But be not ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Rabbi means master, your spiritual master. I mean, it tells you right there. And if you don't believe me, there's a second witness. But I don't want to get into it. And then here's the, 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 the verse for the Catholics. Verse 9. And call no man your father upon the earth. It's not talking about dad, right? And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. What do they call a priest? Father. Forgive me, father, for I've sinned. Well, if a priest is celibate and, you know, has, you know, didn't marry your mother, guess what? He's not your father. And call, call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. And if you don't know what a scribe is, they were the Jewish copyists of the Old Testament, the Tanakh, the Torah, whatever you want to call it. They were well versed in Hebrew, and they copied the scriptures. They, they were basically the book makers of books before there was a printing press. It was all hand copied. Very tedious, meticulous work. Okay? But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees. Hypocrites. Wow. Jesus just called the Jews hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer or allow, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. In other words, they, they block the kingdom of heaven from people because they're not going in and they're not going to let others go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! 
For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. And uh, I've mentioned it many a time, but I'm going to mention it again. The Jews would go, the rabbis would go in to a dying man's house when he's on his deathbed. And then he would kick everybody out of the room, and then the man would die, and then he'd walk out and say, well, the, the, the man wanted to help the temple and the synagogue, and he donated his land and this house to God's service. Well, what about the widow and the children? Oh, well, they got to leave because this property belongs to the synagogue now. And then the rabbi would live in the house, you know, if it was a nicer house than what he had. You know, and uh, the uh, not only did the Jews do that, but the Catholic Church used to do that too. And that was why the, the cry in England was so strong that Parliament and the King made a decree that there had to be five people to sell a piece of property, a, a house. That's why you've, you've got notaries now. It had to be the buyer, the seller, two witnesses, and a notary or a lawyer. There had to be five people that would witness the sale of the house. You know, you just couldn't take somebody you know, on their deathbed and say, oh, they gave me the property, it's mine now. No, no. Had to be the buyer, the seller, or, you know, lawyers representing those uh, people, uh, a notary, and two witnesses. Unrelated. Totally, everybody unrelated. That's why they did that. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you devour widows' houses. Yeah, they would, the, the rabbi would kick the widow and the children out of their house in the middle of the dead of winter and leave them destitute and penniless so they, they could freeze to death in the winter. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Does this sound like God's chosen people? Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass. What is a compass? That means to travel. You ever look at a compass, northeast, southwest? Well, that's where it comes from. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte, one believer. And when he is made, ye make him twofold twice, twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Doesn't Jesus know who he's talking to here? Woe unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by the gold of the temple, he is a debtor. Ye fools and blind, for whither is greater, the gold or the temple that sanctifieth the gold? And whosoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever sweareth by the gift that is upon it, he is guilty. Ye fools and blind, for whither is greater the gift or the altar that sanctifieth the gift? Whoso therefore shall swear by the altar, sweareth by it, and by all things thereon. And whosoever shall swear by the temple, sweareth by it, and by him that dwelleth therein. And he that shall swear by heaven, sweareth by the throne of God, and by him that sitteth thereon. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, Hypocrites! For you pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted, omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment and mercy and faith. These ought ye to have done and not to leave the other undone. Oh yeah, they'll teach you about tithing, but, but things about the law and judgment and mercy and faith, oh, they don't preach that. I, you know, has things changed in the, the 1900 years since Christ? No, absolutely not. Oh, pay your tithes. Boy, I tell you what, if, if I got a dollar every time they said the word tithe on TBN and the 700 Club, I probably could retire. 
But uh, do they teach about the law, judgment, mercy, and faith? No. Ye blind guides, which strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you may clean the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is with then the cup and platter, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres. That's a, that's a grave, people. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and full of un, all uncleanness. What do you think's in a casket? Rotted flesh, disease, you know. Even so ye are also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Iniquity is sin, people. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have partaken with them in the blood of the prophets. You see, when the prophets of God came to tell the people to repent and turn from their wickedness, what did they do? They killed them. They killed the prophets. Verse 31. Wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Therefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify. And some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues. Do you know what scourge means? It means to whip, to beat. And some of them ye shall, shall ye scourge in your synagogues. Who hangs out in the synagogues? Take a guess. And persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel. Who slew Abel? Cain did. Are these people descended, related from Cain? That's what this seems to indicate. From the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Thou that killest the prophets, and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, empty, nothing. And he's talking about Jerusalem here. Well, and, and, then the, the, and then everybody wants you to think that the, the Jews regathering, the so-called Jews regathering over in the Israeli state, they basically want you to tell you that, this is, that, that Jesus' words are worthless. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often... Would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chicken under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. So you're going to believe Jesus, or are you going to believe Jewish fables? For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 21. Oh, uh, let's see. And start in verse 22. Matthew 21 and verse 22. 
And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing ye shall receive. And when he, he, Jesus, and when he was come into the temple, the chief priests, the Jews, the, you know, the Jewish priests, the Levites, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching and said, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? So here it is. Jesus had been healing the sick and raising the dead. And they're asking him, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I also will ask you one thing, which, if ye tell me, I in like wise will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned among themselves, saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, Go, work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And you know what? I think this son is symbolic of Israel. Originally, Israel would not follow the Lord. But after Jesus came, Israel repented and came to the Lord. And Israel and Judah are not the same. Take a look at Jeremiah 3 and verse 8, if you don't believe it. God divorced Israel, but not Judah. So the Israel said, I'm not going to serve the Lord, but afterwards he repented and served. Verse 30, and he came to the second and said likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Well, that was Judah. Judah said, oh, I'll serve the Lord, but they wouldn't do it. Okay? So let's read that again. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterward he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whither of them twain did the will of his father? They said unto him the first. Jesus saith unto them, Listen carefully. Verily I say unto you, that the publicans, publicans a tax collector, that the publicans and the harlots, what's a harlot? A prostitute or a whore. Jesus is speaking to the Jews now. Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. The tax collectors and the whores going to go into the kingdom of God before you Jews do. Basically, that's the Bob translation. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward that ye might believe him. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and led it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first and did they, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. 
When the Lord, therefore, of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They said unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus saith unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Who's Jesus speaking to here? The Pharisees, the Jews. Verse 43. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Maybe that was why the New Testament was written in Greek. Almost all of Paul's writings were written to Greek cities. And, and Hebrew roots people and, and the Jews want you to think that this is not true. They want you to think that this entire, everything that Jesus said is suspect and was, was ruined by the Greeks. No. I believe every word of this King James Bible. The kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. And Whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it shall grind him to power. And when the chief priests and Pharisees, the Jews, had heard his parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. I mean, it's pretty obvious who Jesus was speaking to here, you know? All right, turn your Bibles to, let's see, what do we got here? Matthew chapter 5, starting in verse 18. Jesus speaking, For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, not one, uh, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Now, basically, a jot and a tittle is basically the dotting of the I's and the crossing of the T's. Verse 19, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least, the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, listen carefully, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. Ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. If your righteousness doesn't exceed the righteousness of the Jews, buddy, you're in trouble. Big time. Period. All right, let's take a look. All right, Romans chapter 9 and starting in verse 28. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. A short work. Uh, you know, that's interesting. I've just noticed that. You ever heard uh, somebody say he made a short work? For example, if there was two people boxing, and the one guy knocked the guy out in the first round, you'd say, well, he made a short work of, of that, you know. Or in a battle, you know, uh, the um, a country invades another country and makes a short work of it. It means they conquered him quickly. Um, <laughs> it's going to be a short work. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, Except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and had been made like unto Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, 
That's that word is um, sometimes translated as nations. Doesn't necessarily mean non-Jew. That the Gentiles, what shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, you see, they didn't follow after righteousness, which followed not after righteousness, have obtained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. See, that's where our righteousness comes from, our faith in Christ. And your faith, Righteousness better exceed that of the unbelieving Jews. In Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 15, you know, I know I spend a lot of time in the Old Testament, but, you know, I tell you what, it's worth it. Jeremiah 33, 15, In those days and at the time will I cause the branch of righteousness, is it talking about Christ, Will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David? Well, Christ was a direct descendant of David the king, by the flesh, anyways. And he will execute judgment and righteousness in the land. See, this is a prophecy. This was a prophecy for the future at the time Jeremiah wrote this. So the, the branch of righteousness grew up, the babe in the manger, Mary and Joseph, remember? But the day when he's going to execute judgment and righteousness in the land, well, that's going to be when Christ returns again. All right. In Proverbs 21, 21, He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness, and honor. In the book of Hosea, chapter 10 and verse 12, it says, Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy. So if we plant righteousness, we're going to harvest mercy from the Lord, right? Sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he come and rain righteousness upon you. Huh. Isaiah 45 and verse 8. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. When Christ was pierced, what came out of his side? Water and blood. So is this just talking about rain? It's a special type of water, people. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Where did Christ come from? Heaven above the sky, right? Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. And here's another thing from uh, Philippi was a, um, a city in Greece. So the book of Philippians is a book that God, Paul wrote to the church at Philippi. And uh, the Paul haters, uh, like I did in my last study, they're, they wrestle the scriptures to their own destruction. I've never seen anybody deny Paul, who had a decent ministry. Never. Philippians verse 3 and verse 9. Chapter 3 and verse 9. Philippians 3 and verse 9. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God, by faith. And be found in him, be found in who? In Christ. And be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law. And don't, don't the uh, Noahide, the, the Torah people, they're always pushing the law. Not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God 
by faith. Amen, people. I can't do any better than that. All right, this will be the end of uh, Great Deception chapter, uh, I'm sorry, part three. And uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the, to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name. Amen. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to him. Amen.